Hello again and welcome to another Mori and Glory Warhammer 40k video. In today's episode we shall be casting our ever critical eye over another 10th edition data sheet and once more we shall be taking to the skies around Ford World with a look at another Imperial Guard aircraft. Previously, we've looked at Strikecraft, we've looked at Dogfighters, and we have looked at Assault Carriers. But now it is time for one of the most infamous and iconic flyers of the Guard. The one that you call upon if you need to absolutely, positively shred all of the light infantry in the room. The one that even the Orcs consider might be enough DACA. I am, of course, talking about the Vulture Gunship. And so, without further ado, let's not mess around any further. Let's chocks away, take to the skies, and fly right into today's episode. As is tradition, let us begin with a brief overview of what the hell this unit actually is. In essence, the Vulture Gunship is a Valkyrie, and we've actually covered that video already. If you've not seen it, I'll make sure there's a link to it at the end of the episode. But it is based on the Valkyrie STC. But somebody looked at it and went, what if we took a Valkyrie and we took out all of the seats and we replaced all of the seats with bullets and then we put more bullets on top of those bullets what if we basically just filled the entire cargo compartment with extra ammunition and the tech priest took one look and went yeah all right and thus the vulture gunship was born now that is totally how it happened in the fluff no need to look it up and double check me but how does all of that translate onto the tabletop what is the crunch well to find out we need to look at the vulture gunships data sheet and let us begin with its stat line like all aircraft it has a movement value of 20 plus inches this means when it is flying it must move a minimum of 20 inches but it has no maximum move yep that's right, it can zoom from one end of the tabletop to the other in one go. Hell, if you really wanted to do it, it could zoom from one end of the tabletop and go to the other tabletop from someone else is playing next to you. I'm not saying that's a legal move, but you could literally move this an infinite distance. It has no movement limit. The only limit is the actual space of the gaming board that you're playing on. However, a quick side note, whilst this infinite movement might seem amazing, bear in mind you still need to be able to place the model. So if there's terrain in the way or a single grot picking its nose, then you may not be able to land the vulture where you want, and this could impede its movement in future turns or restrict where you can actually put this thing in terms of a useful place on the battlefield. Moving on from its movement stat, and yes, that was pun intended, and yes, I do appreciate how terrible a joke that was, we have the other stats on this unit, and we get to its defensive profile. 11 plus 10, 2 plus save, and 14 wounds. This makes the Vulture, in terms of aircraft, a flying brick. It's T10. Most aircraft are T8, T9 at best. Nope, T10. You're going to have to sling LAS cannons into this thing because auto cannons just aren't going to do the job. A 2 plus save is wild as well. That is the same save as a Land Raider. That's the same save as a Bane Blade. That's the same save as a Lehman Russ. That's the same save as a Rogal Dawn. It's a flying tank. Even if you do hit it with the aforementioned LAS cannons, it's still going to stop the shots 33% of the time. You've got a 5 up save as LAS cannons. Brilliant. And even if it does fail that, you will need 2 perfectly placed lance cannon shots in order to kill this thing. In fact, on average, your lance cannon is going to do between 4 and 5 damage. Either way, you're going to need 3 to 4 lance cannon wounds through on this thing before it's going to go down. What I'm saying is, it's tough. And I have used vultures personally, and I have had people literally in competitive environments put half a dozen lance cannon shots into one of these things and for it to just about survive. And that happened more than once. So they are not the kind of aircraft that's going to get picked out of the sky by some spare medium firepower. 
they will require a dedicated anti-tank to deal with. And that means that the anti-tank is going into your Vulture rather than into something potentially more valuable, a Rogal Dawn or some other armored assets. It then has a leadership of seven plus, completely standard issue in the guard, and an OC of zero. That's right, the Vulture gunship, no matter how clear that objective may be, will never be able to hold it. Now that just about sums up its stat line. As you can see, it's fast moving and it's tough, but it's not just about how durable it is, about how much damage this thing can sling out. So for that, we need to have a look at the war gear and weapons. As standard, each Vulture will become equipped with a heavy bolter, two multiple rocket pods, Vulture Hellstrike racks, and you can swap out the two multiple rocket pods and the Hellstrike rocket rack for two Vulture Gatling cannons. As you can see, the Vulture is fast and tough, but it's not just about the punch it can take, it's about the pain it can lay out. And to look at that, we need to go through its war gear and weapon. Start off, the Vulture comes equipped with a heavy bolter, two multiple rocket pods, and the Vulture Hellstrike rack. On their own, these weapons are totally okay. The heavy bolter is the same as you'd find anywhere else. Multiple rocket pods are the same as you would find on the Valkyrie, so the 36 inch range, blast D6 shots each. So 2d6 shots with double blast and their strength 6, AP0, damage 1. And then you've got the Vulture Hellstrike Rack, which is similar to a lot of the Hellstrike Rockets we've seen on Forge or Flies. It's actually an improvement over the Valkyrie one, it's more like the Forge ones. So it actually has a 48 range with two shots, not one, like the Valkyrie. And then it's Mr. Skill 4 plus Strength 10, AP minus 3, D6 damage. And they're also Anti Fly 2 plus. And that's fly, not flyer. So anything that's like a skimmer tank, like an Eldar Wave Serpent or Fire Dragon or anything like that, Fire Prism, I should say, uh, will be ruined on twos. And honestly, that loadout shouldn't be overlooked. It has good anti-infantry firepower. It's got a modicum of reliability between the heavy bolter and the blast. And it actually has some kind of anti-tank sort of situation with the Hellstrike Rack, which is important in our 10th edition meta. However, you're not taking the Vulture for this loadout because there are other vehicles which can do it better. You've got the Avenger Strike Fighter, which also comes with the same Hellstrike rockets and comes with an Avenger Gatling Cannon, which is going to put out more damage than those rocket pods. It's got better uh, not strength, but it's got better AP and better damage. So if you want something that's going to dacker down infantry and be able to target vehicles, you probably want to go for the Avenger. If you want something that can sort of go purely into anti-tank, you'll probably go for something like a Lightning. If you want something that's a little bit down the middle, you'll probably go for a Thunderbolt. So what's the point in the Vulture? What's its USP? What makes it unique outside of its toughness? That is... It's war gear options. So you can take those two multiple rocket pods. You can take that Vulture Hellstrike Rack. Right, you take all of it and just throw it in the bin. You do get to keep the heavy bolter though. And you can replace those rocket pods and the Hellstrikes with two, not one, two Vulture Gatling cannons. This is the signature weapon system of this vehicle and is really the reason you're going to take it. Because it allows the Vulture to put out an insane amount of firepower. The volume that this thing does is unrivaled. Lever as Punishers can't hold a torch, this thing. Exterminators can't hold a torch to it. The Avenger, not even in the same galaxy. The thing's going to be putting out pure volume on the same level as like a Stormlord. Okay, and that's including all the Heavy Bolters. Right? It's putting out a lot of numbers. The Vulture Gatling Cannon is a 24 inch range, 18 shot, and bear in mind it's got two of them, so yes, that is 36 shots. Listen skill 4 plus, strength 5, AP 0, damage 1. But it also has sustained hits. So you are going to be getting 18 shots, but on average, you're going to get six sixes to hit. And so that is going to generate six sustained hits. And that's just looking at this thing in a vacuum. This is before we take into account, for example, 
your regimental advisors, which can allow the Vulture Gatling Cannons to hit on threes, which really get past the only weakness of this weapon, which is the fact that it's Blister Skill 4+. Plus. And even then, you don't even need the advisors. You're throwing enough dice at the table that between the number of shots and the sustained hits, you're probably going to get the amount of firepower that you want. Don't forget the Heavy Bolt has also got sustained hits. So the sustained hits going out of the wazoo of this thing. And with it being strength 5, it really is a threat to almost any infantry out there. Of course, if you're up against light infantry, like other guardsmen, or termagants, or Eldar light involved, just Eldar, any Eldar infantry, they're all like toughness 3 or toughness 4 at best, you're wounding them on 3s. And you're going to stack a lot of wounds onto them. You're going to shred them. Or you've got medium infantry, things like space marines. And I'd even class maybe like orcs in there, because they are T5. You are going to be able to wound those Space Marines on threes still, because you're strength five. Now, sure, you don't really have the AP to get to the Space Marine armor, but bear in mind that if you've got a unit of Space Marines, because you're AP dash, they don't really get the benefit of cover against this thing. Those Space Marines are going to be on a three-up save, whether they're tucked into a ruin or whether they're out in the open. And just through sheer weight of numbers, you'll be able to grind them down. Statistically, I don't think the Vulture like gets a unit of Space Marines in one go. You've got 36 shots. Half of those are going to hit, so you'll get 18 hits. Although there will be six sustained hits in there, so you get 24 hits. You'll get 16 wounds, and then the Space Marines will fail uh, a third of those. So you'll get like five or six wounds through. So you'll kill like three Marines with the Vulture Gatling Cannon. Depending on what the Heavy Bolt does, you might be able to pick up the last one or two in the typical five-man unit. With her bolter being damaged to it can do that so it's not ideal for like wasting space marine squads but it can do it and i have done this against form berserkers i've done it against care space i've done it against regular marines you can just shred them down and what i don't define with the vulture and i know it's a little bit of an anecdotal information but i do tend to find that when you play enough games these things crop up more often than you expect because you're throwing so many dice at the enemy, sometimes you just create those opportunities. You look at averages, but you've also got to look at the fact that sometimes your opponent does roll badly. And the Vulture can come in, and I have had the Vulture come in and just pick up five Marines without even trying. I've had it come in and just pick up, like, a mob of Orcs. The majority of mob of Orcs without even trying. Because my opponent has rolled badly. Or sometimes you have it on the other side, but your opponent rolls well. But the more dice you throw at the opponent more chances that you're going to get the rolls that you want them to get. More chances they're going to have fail. So I have found that the Vulture can, even against targets which it's not ideally suited for, it can kind of bulldoze them down. However, there is one big problem. And that is the Vulture is only good at targeting infantry. And we aren't in a matter of infantry. We're in a matter of vehicles and monsters. And most of those vehicles and monsters are going to be toughness 10 or above. And so the big problem with the Vulture Gatling Cannon is whilst it is great at killing infantry, there really isn't that many things for it to feast upon. Most games that you're going to play competitively will involve, or even just casually, the competitive meta can kind of leak into it. And often people, not even that, people like taking big stompy things. Just putting the competitive thing to one side for a moment. People like tanks. People like monsters. People are going to take those, whether they're good or bad. And right now they're good, so they're going to be encouraged to take them even more. And in that kind of environment, whilst you might find that there is a little unit here and there, the vulture to get its teeth into, there really isn't as much prey for it to consume. There really isn't as many viable targets as you like. I have had games with my vulture where it's come in and for a turn or two, it's hoovered up all these little one-man units. Well, little five man units, one or two of them here and there. And then, that's it. Its efficiency just plummets into the Earth's core through the other side and into the, the, the void. And you can't really do anything about it. I've had vultures go in and pick up almost an entire brood of termagants with a little bit of support from sustained hits and from also... The regimental advisors and then in the same turn i've had the vulture turn around and not take a wound off the monster it's very very target dependent and sadly whilst the vulture is very cool and it certainly wins the rule of cool and it 
feels great rolling that number of dice. You have to be aware that it is very specific at what it wants to kill and it's very limited. And that's why at the beginning of the Weapons of War gear segment, I said, don't dismiss the first loadout. Don't dismiss the Hell Strike rack because it actually gives you a bit of anti-tank. And whilst it feels wrong, and whilst there are probably other better options if you want to go down an anti-tank flyer, don't dismiss it. Because the Gatling cannons are great, but sometimes you need a bit more anti-tank. Attention Guardsmen, this is an announcement by the Departmento Munitorum. Element Games is an official sponsor of the Mordian Glory channel. They offer up to 20% off Warhammer 40k and 10% off full action and other game systems. Use the link down in the description to save money and support the channel. Anyone not using the link will be referred to the local commissariat. Also, don't forget that if you use referral code TIM3921, then you will receive double store credit, saving even more money on your future purchases. That's all for now. Fallout! Of course, the Vulture isn't just bringing weapons and armor to the table. It has an ability, and its ability is okay. It's Gunship Barrage. In your shooting phase, after this model has shot, select one enemy unit hit by one or more of those attacks. That enemy unit must take a battle shock test. Now, if that ability said that unit is considered battle shocked, I would be like, Woo, baby, sign me up to a pair of vultures in every single goddamn list. Oh, a bad one, you want to make yourself untargetable with your bloody Nurgle strategy? Well, you can't. Oh, you want to bring back that entire brood of unending swarm buggers well you can't oh you want to make your orcs mass one to wound well you can't but the problem is that it doesn't say is battle shocked it says we'll take a battle shock test and sadly most people pass their battle shock tests i think there's only a few units out there where you're more likely to fail than pass but most of the time people just pass them and then you've got the simple fact that it's doesn't matter if you really battle shock someone in your turn, unless you're trying to get rid of that key stratagem. The moment it goes over to their turn, unless they're below half strength, they'll just be fine at the beginning of their turn. Battle shock that you inflict in your turn does not last until the opponent's until the next into your next turn. It lasts until the end of your turn, and at the beginning of the command phase, your opponent must then see if they need to do a battle shock test. So the big issue is that if it with battle shock in your turn. Is whilst you can, like I said, mess around people's stratagems, you can't really mess around with the points. And what you would be ideal with the Vulture is it comes in and goes, does its thing, and the enemy unit can't hold an objective. And that would be wildly powerful. But it's not that, so at best, it's a nice to have. But here's the thing. Even with the limitation of the Gatling Cannons, they are quite good. And even with the ability being a bit middling, there are opportunities where it might swing the game in your favour. And so there really is a lot of stuff to get excited about for the Vulture, and it's a good unit. I have used it. I've used two of them. I have taken them to tournaments. They have done work. I've used them in battle ports. They have done work. But there's something wrong with the Vulture. And it has nothing to do with its data sheet. And it has everything to do with its points cost. It's too expensive. Unlike a lot of the Forge World flyers that we've looked at, things like the Lightning and the Avenger, which are dirt cheap, like 130 points, so eminently puttable in your list that it almost seems rude not to. If you've got one, go nuts, have fun with it. Even if it's not the most efficient unit, it'll still have a great time. Even if it's, you know, there's better options. It's 130 points, it's fine, you know? You can chuck one in, you're not going to cripple your list. It's not like putting a big super heavy in them when the super heavy dies. Like, oh, lost 25 something army. No, 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 nothing like that. The Vulture, on the other hand, is just expensive. It's 225 points. One of the most expensive flyers that you can pop in your army. And considering how limited in scope it is, considering... Unlike the Valkyrie, you don't even have a transport capacity that can somehow weirdly explain the high points cost. It's just too expensive. And the issue is that we've had what, four or five rounds of points updates now in 10th uh, in edition. 
and it still hasn't been changed. We've had a lot of stuff that's been changed around it, but it still hasn't been changed. 225 points is far too much. 225 points makes it more expensive than most of your main battle tanks. And your main battle tanks are just as tough as this thing. They've got the same save, they've got better toughness and a similar amount of wounds. And yet, your Lehman Ross is going to be able to take on all targets. It'll be able to take on infantry because it's going to have, if it's an exterminator, it's going to have the volume and it's going to have the extra firepower from the sponsors and whatnot. It's going to take on tanks because, again, using Exterminator as an example, it has got twin links and it's going to have a lance cannon, a hunter killer strapped onto it. The sponsors might be things like plasma cannons or multi which again help with that kind of role. So you can take units which are just as durable and which put out just as much firepower but are significantly cheaper. And bear in mind that another problem with the Vulture is it's an aircraft. And we've covered this extensively, so I'm not going to go into the now. But suffice to say, the aircraft rules of 10th edition are so fundamentally shite that often they're not worth taking. And this is what makes the Vulture such a, a pain in the ass, because you want to take it. It's a fun unit. I've had oodles of fun. And if you don't care about being competitive, you just want to have fun, then it's a great unit. And please go ahead and include one in your army. But... From a competitive point of view, it's sadly overcosted and too specialist and not really anti meta or meta enough to warrant illusion. So, outside of your fun games, I would say that the Vulture is sadly one that's going to stay on the airstrip. Of course, that's just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are you a fan of the Vulture? Have you used it in 10th edition? And if so, did you get it to work? Or have you found it just a little bit too pricey? If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons. You guys are amazing. Truly the lifeblood of the channel. I could not do Mordian glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters and they have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty so a big shout out to bon bon vert mad larkin marcus roberts mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone john stubbs Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox, and August Varney. Thank you guys so much. Your incredible generosity is a massive part of how I'm able to do more Duke Glory full time, and it is a big driving force behind the channel. But I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching, and of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.